today. We're talking about the environment. Not that environment, your program's environment. In my last video, I mentioned an environment variable. And after filming, it occurred to me that some of you may not know what in the world I'm talking about. Now this could be a beginner topic, but I've also met a lot of juniors and seniors who don't really understand how environment variables work and don't really have a lot of experience with them. So we're just gonna say this is an everybody topic today. Okay, so to start, get out your terminal. So open up a terminal. If you're on Linux, Mac OS, or any other Unix style OS, just type env. Now this is gonna print out a bunch of variables. This is what we refer to as the environment. If you're on Windows, it's a little trickier. Go to the control panel, click here, click here and here, and then down here at the bottom, click there. You know, it's almost like Microsoft doesn't want you to know that there are environment variables there, but they're really there. Everybody has environment variables. So each variable has a name and a value. By convention, the names are all uppercase. They don't have to be, of course, you can name them whatever you want, but why confuse people? And the values are strings. They really can be anything you want them to be. And the point of these variables is to communicate to programs how the machine is set up and sometimes to control the behavior of programs. So for example, in my environment, it tells my programs what users logged in and what my home directory is and what language I'm currently using and a lot of other things. So one useful variable is the path variable. It, this one tells my computer where to look for executable programs. And if I put my program in any of these directories, I can run it from anywhere without typing the path to the program. And that's why I can just type ls, and I don't have to type out the path to the binary like this. Though, of course, that definitely works too. If a C program wants to read an environment variable, then it can use the getENV function. Just pass in the variable name you want, You'll get null if it isn't set and a pointer to the value if it is. Okay, here, so let's print out a few that are set and one that isn't so you can see how this works and compile it and run it. Easy. And now because we need at least two ways to do everything, we can also rewrite main like this. Now, most of you have seen main look like this and like this with argc and argv. Many of you may not have seen it look like this, but this is also supported on most platforms. And that third argument, envp, is actually the environment. This is a list of environment variables. It's really a list of strings. And, and I don't know how long it is, but it's null terminated. So I can just loop through the array, printing out the variables until I get to a null pointer. And so let's compile it, we run it. Great, easy. And of course, because we need at least three ways to do everything, I'm not kidding, I'm serious. libc defines a global variable called environ that is a pointer to the list of environment variables. So we define it as extern because it's actually defined elsewhere in libc, and we can loop through that array just like we did the envp array, and we just get the same results. See? Okay, so now say I wanted to set an environment variable. If I'm in the terminal, I can just set it on the command line before I run a program. This will set the variable just for that program. Now let's say I want to set it for the entire terminal session, then I use export. Why is it called export, you ask? No idea, but now the variable will be set for every program that runs in that terminal session. And of course I can use the unset command to unset the variable if I decided that my use of export was a bit hasty. And if I'm inside my program, I can set a variable using set env or put env. Both do roughly the same thing, they're just called slightly differently. Now keep in mind that this just sets the variable for this program and any child processes that it creates. After this program runs and we go back to the terminal, that variable will not be set. But if my program creates a new program, if it forks off a child process or executes a new program, then that child will see the variable change. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say today about environment variables. I think you have the basics now. I hope that's useful. I hope it helps you make more sense of some of the things that go on in the terminal. And it gives you another option for ways that you can communicate and control programs and take advantage of information that's right there in your terminal that you may not have been aware of. So I hope that helps. And until next time, I'll see you later.